from this concertina for beginners number nine believe it or not this is the second time i've recorded this <laughs> well actually that's not true i tried to record it and i hadn't pressed the record button so i'm having to do it all over again so you'll get uh, same mistakes twice i suppose right um if you haven't seen the others go back and have a look at those um, we're looking at uh, old lang syne and how we're looking at how to apply a few chords how to put some of our theory into practice, a little bit of that, okay? And we're playing in the key of C. So maybe you want to get your fingers on those keys. Okay. Um, now, Old Lang Syne, there's the key, there's the key signature we're playing in, La, excuse my singing, La, we're in there. Where would Old Lang Syne go on there? Well, La, should old La, da, bum, bum. If you remember, we've heard that before in things like British Grenadiers, bum, 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 da, 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 bum, da, 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 and in things like, um, um, uh, the, the one with the mice, uh, they all run after the farmer's wife, la dom. It's the fifth note in the scale to the top of the scale. So even before we go near our concertina, we've got the first two notes there. We've got la dom. There's the dom. And on the other end of the box, we're going to be able to find that. Okay, in just a minute. So. Uh, la dum bum bum bum. Now what's that note there? Well, it's the three blind mice, isn't it? Yeah, we saw that in the previous lesson. La da da dum, la dum dum dum, la da da dum. So before we even go near the box, I'm hoping that you've got some idea of what's going to be happening under your fingers because we've got that bit of three blind mice in there. La da da, three blind mice. La da da, la da da. That there is the arpeggio, the C chord. C E G, la da da. And the next note up from there is la, the sixth note in the scale, okay? And that'll be on the other finger on the other end, okay? And when you've got that, you've got the whole tune, really. It's almost there. So let's recap. We've got la dum, fifth note in the scale to the tonic note, the C note, la da, la da da da, three blind mice blind, la da da da, three blind mice, la da da, la da da. That's the C chord, da. That's the sixth note in the scale, one up from the G, the A, okay? So let's have a go at playing it. Um, use the little button, it's probably about here, about now. Use the little button to, uh -uh, the other way, to rewind like that, okay? And then you'll be able to see this bit again without having to watch the whole video, okay? One, two, three, four, two, two, three. <laughs> You don't always have to have three notes in a chord, uh, sometimes there are more, but you can actually get away with using fewer because the listener will understand what the harmony is, whether they know it or not, they will realise what's going on. So what I'm going to ask you to do is kind of glue those two fingers together and glue those two fingers together and we're going to play pairs of notes and you'll see, I hope, what I mean. Well, should old acquaintance I'm on the right hand end of the box and I'm playing two notes at the same time there from the chord. Sorry. Can you hear that? 
that effect, playing two notes at the same time thickens the sound out and it fools people into thinking you're playing a bit more complicated really, a bit more complicated music. <laughs> So there's one thing you can try. I can't show you everything in this 10 minutes. Um, go away after you, I've given you these ideas and see whether you can use those pair of, pairs of fingers. Another uh, wonderful way to approach this particular tune is to treat it like that. You know, the, it, it will be played on the Scottish bagpipes where they have sets of drones going. And a wonderful drone is that, is that fifth note in the scale. And with a bit of uh, jumping around, you have to use a a finger that you don't, you normally use it, but you have to put it on the wrong row to play the tune. But if you hold down that G note like this, can you hear the effect? It's as, as though you've got the uh, bagpipes thrown in. That's a nice effect, isn't it? Uh, before I made the video, uh, or before I sat down to make it, I was just having a little play with a part of uh, Don't Cry For Me Argentina. Yeah, don't cry for me, la da da don't, starts on that third note of the scale. We've seen it so many times. And you can actually get don't cry for me, Argentina just by using, gluing those fingers together. Yeah, and you get in a, a fuller, more uh, enjoyable sound, I hope, yeah? So, uh, some things to, to think about there. Glue those two fingers together is one possibility. It's not very classical, and classical teachers would tell you off because you don't like to see harmonies rising and falling like that. Normally they like to see harmonic lines going in opposite directions. But, you know, we're not trying to be Mozart. Um, so try that. Try adding a drone and try it with one or two other tunes, OK? Now, since I was last uh, with you, I've had the chance to sit in on a session, a folk music session, where I didn't know the tunes. And I put this chord theory to practice. I'm lucky enough to be able to recognise guitar chords. Great tip this. Ask a guitarist friend to show you what the C chord, the F chord and the G chord looks like. Now when you're sitting, if they're playing something, you can say, oh that's a C chord. That's in there. Oh that's an F chord. That's there. Oh that's a G chord. And just by gluing those two fingers together, you can start to add a little bit of percussive vamping using those chords to match what the guitarist and the whistle players or the fiddlers might be doing, okay? So it's a good tip. Learn a few, you don't have to play the guitar, just ask a guitarist to show you what the chords look like and how they play them. And when you're sitting with them, if you figure out where those chords are on your box, you can join in with the music even though you might not be playing the melody notes themselves. There's lots of tunes that I don't play on here because I find the fingering fiddly, um, in which case I normally pick the guitar up and play that. But, uh, you know, you don't have to learn every tune there is. You can participate in a music session or with other musicians if you know a little bit about where your chords are and you can add a little bit to what's going on. Now, we're running short of time. Future lessons. I'm going to leave the cording there, I think. But I have got one or two ideas for future lessons. I'd like to do some more work on the listening exercises. I'll play a phrase and ask you to play it back to me. I think you'll find that helpful. Um, I'd like to get my daughter in and the two of us play something and maybe you can join in with that. Maybe she plays the melody, I might play the guitar and ask you to play the concertina. So we'll have an online... Uh, virtual international band. I think that sounds like a bit of fun. I've also got a thought that it would be good to take the ends off one of these and have a look inside and then I've got a special surprise up my sleeve which I shall leave but another four or five videos. Okay, catch you later. Bye.